Hi, my name's Matt Sopranowitz, the Executive Director of Sustainable Farms, and today we're coming with another sustainability activity for you at home. We're actually partnering with Hannah, the science teacher at Denver Green School Northfield, to tie it directly to a curriculum that's getting rolled out. So today we're going to be making a closed system terrarium out of a two liter soda bottle. Um, and I'm going to go through first the supplies that you need for this. And everything that I have in front of me, I found on a walk today. Uh, so let me walk you through it. So the first thing is on my walk, um, where I was keeping six feet of social distance from everyone around me, I was looking for interesting pieces of wood and rocks. I also found some potting soil right here. I found some clay sand. I found some small pebbles. I also found some other larger grain sand and some other rocks. Over here, I have moss. This plant was a house plant that I took from my house. And the other items I was able to find right here. So I had some extra seeds. I found a chopstick, a pair of scissors, a marker, this two liter bottle I took out of the recycling, and this coffee mug is just a guide for drawing a line. All right, so let's get started on this. The first thing that you're gonna want to do is you could fill up this two liter soda bottle um, by using a funnel but I think it's really challenging. So I think it's far easier to cut it in half and use it uh, that way. The easiest way I think there is to do this is to take a coffee mug and place the marker right on top of the coffee mug. And then take the, uh, take the two liter bottle and spin it around, drawing your line. And this way, when you go to cut it, it's a perfectly uh, level line. So we no longer need the marker. We don't need the coffee cup. And the next step is simply to cut this. Now, um, you could do this with a knife. You could do this with scissors. And depending on your age, it's probably best to get some support from an adult. So I'm going to quickly cut this now. OK, we're back. Um, I was able to cut this right in half. Um, you are going to need the lid to this. So make sure that that's secured tightly and you don't lose it. And the next few steps are the fun part. That's where we're actually going to get to fill this up. Now, a closed system terrarium, you want water to be able to move throughout. So in its liquid phase, but also um, into water vapor as well. And so that means that there needs to be some space at the bottom where water can kind of pool. Um, and it's, it's going to be away from the roots of the plant. And that will actually turn back into water vapor. So the way in which we do that is we put some larger rocks at the bottom. And so that creates uh, gaps in there where water can sit. And you want to move from the largest to the smallest size. So the next thing that we're going to do is add a layer of smaller pebbles. I like to try to find things with different colors because the layering looks really nice. And then after that, I'm going to move to sand. And I'm going to add a layer of this clay sand as well. And what this does is it allows the water to move down through this and it actually filters out the dirt so that it's able to move back up forward. Now, another thing that can filter is a layer of moss. And so we're actually gonna put a layer of moss down and this is going to serve as a filter. And it looks really nice to have the layers. And then the next step is we actually want to add soil on top. Um, so because I'm actually planting um, a plant, I'm going to start with this first. Um, and make sure that the roots come on out. And I'm going to add some more soil. You're going to want probably a good two to four inches of soil. So I'm going to keep adding here. That 
looks pretty good. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add some seeds into here. So these are wildflower seeds that I just had in my house. And we don't need too many, just a few. And then um, we are gonna add some things that are gonna give some visual interest to this as well. And so I have this neat rock that I'm going to get settled in there. Um, followed by some smaller rocks, um, a piece of wood here, and I'm actually going to add some extra moss in here as well, because that can grow on top. And you can add some rocks on top of the moss too. I found a few different varieties of moss on my walk, and so I'm going to add a few different kinds in here. If you want to get into nooks and crannies, you can use your chopstick to kind of help support that. All right, it's starting to look pretty nice. I'm going to add a little bit more moss here. So that the soil is actually completely covered. Um, I also found a plastic dinosaur and I'm going to add that plastic dinosaur in because I think it's fun. And the next step is um, in order for this to be a closed system and keep moisture in, we need to actually add the top of our soda bottle back in. I think what works best is to add this along the outside. And hopefully we can get ours to slide right in. If not, you can create like a little vent to make it a little bit larger, which I think we're going to have to do. So I'm just going to take the scissors and make a half an inch vent, which is going to allow this to go around the outside a little bit easier. So I was able to slide this back over the top. And... Um, there's about an inch of overlap so that it is in fact a closed system here. And um, it's pretty cool. And so this is a living system that's gonna work great self-sufficiently as long as it has two things, the right amount of sun and the right amount of water. And so the goal is that this should always be moist inside, a little bit damp, not soaking wet. And you'll notice that water will start to evaporate and then condensate and there will be a full cycle throughout this entire thing. Uh, the way that we would water it is simply by opening the top of the lid, adding a little bit of water down into it, and then closing it back up. All plants need sunlight, so for this to work and operate, it does need about six hours of sunlight a day. We don't want direct sunlight that would burn the plants because this will actually get very warm inside. Um, but we want indirect sunlight for about six hours. So that might mean that you move it to a windowsill for six hours and then move it away. Um, or you just find a really good spot in your house that only gets about six hours of sunlight. And that's what my plan is. Um, and then what this will do is you'll be able to watch the growth of the plants. You'll be able to watch the water cycle throughout. And you'll really see how plants grow. Um, and it's a fun, cool little project that looks pretty neat too. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you appreciated this video, share it with your friends. Um, give us a subscription and a like on YouTube. And tune in for the rest of the week's videos. See you later.